What's going on guys? Stefan here with you, SD's Garage. Today, our friends at Xtool sent us this really nice uh, boroscope. You know, I let them know that I was going to be needing one of these in the near future to do some projects, uh, some of which I haven't shown you guys yet. But um, they said, hey, we got one for you. Let's send it over. You know, you let us know how you like it. So this is the Xtool VX100. They call it a video scope. They say that it can be used in the car, the house, for pipes, and whatever else. Uh, so I figured, let's do a video using this 2007 Camry here. Uh, recently we did some extended drain intervals with the oil. Uh, you can see some of my other videos on that. And I wanted to take a look into the, into the combustion chambers and see what, if any, carbon buildup we have in there. Uh, you know, some carbon buildup is always going to be normal, but I said, hey, let's check it out. Uh, so we're going to go ahead, let me set you up on the tripod, and let's open this. I haven't even opened it yet, so let's open it. Let's see exactly how we connect it to our X-Tool here, and uh, let's get right into it. All right, guys, so the box for this guy is actually pretty nice. It feels like a nice quality box. So let's go ahead and open it up, like so. We're going to go ahead and get our fingers in here. So in here you'll see we have the borescope itself, you have the wire tucked away in this little corner here so we'll open that up so we can get the wire out. And here we have the camera with a nice uh, safety tip on there to keep it from you know getting damaged and whatnot. And then here we have our accessories. There's a mirror in there and uh, there's a couple of other things that we're going to go ahead and, uh, and check out. You'll also have your directions and these will explain to you exactly how to use it. It looks like it just plugs right into the USB 3.0 port on your, um, your X tool, whether you have D7, D8, D9, whatever you have. Um, and then it also shows you down here exactly how to um, install the adapters and whatnot. So let's, uh, let's go ahead, let's take our D8 out of the box here, the tablet, scan tool, whatever you want to call it. And let's connect this guy and see how it works. If you have an X-Tool D7 or D8, this boroscope is an absolute must-have. These should be purchased hand in hand. If you're buying an X-Tool scan tool, buy the boroscope. They go hand in hand, they work together flawlessly and seamlessly. Uh, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to link down below an X-Tool D8 along with uh, the Bluetooth version. Um, and I'm also going to put a coupon code down there. Uh, if you use that coupon code and you click that link, the channel does get a small cut for that. And we appreciate that. It helps our channel grow. And then I'm also going to go ahead and add a link for the um, boroscope as well. All right, guys. So we went ahead and plugged in our uh, boroscope. So it is now plugged in. And this is going to be very simple to use. You're basically going to go to the home screen here on your X tool scan tool. Let me just get you set up a little bit better. Okay. And you're going to go to camera. And then you simply have to press this button here to change the interface. So you'll see right now we are on the rear facing camera of the unit itself. But if you press this button, it will switch us over to the X tool. Now you can change the brightness of the light on the front of the camera like so with this knob here and I believe that this button here will take a photo just like so. Alright so with that being said let's get over to the car and uh, let's see what our cylinders look like without the mirror and then we'll try it with the mirror. Alright guys so here we are we are right now in cylinder number one and you will see that there is some very, very light scoring on the cylinder walls. But you will also see that there is a very nice crosshatch. Now, like I said, this is cylinder number one. There is a very small amount of carbon buildup. Actually, it looks like, yeah, my intake valves might be open there too. Uh, but you can actually see there is a very small amount of carbon buildup on the dome of the piston. But that is not anything that I would call excessive. This looks, you know pretty standard to me. So now let's go ahead, let's go into number two, and guide it down into the hole. And 
this piston is actually pretty clean. Again, we can still see our crosshatch, but there is slight cylinder wall scoring. Most of that scoring is probably just from carbon buildup on the rings. That would probably ripe, uh, you know, wipe right off. I'm actually pretty well surprised at the amount of crosshatch that's left. So let's go ahead down into number three. You know, I really don't see anything too alarming here. This is, uh, I feel pretty good about this engine right now. And let's get into number four. Wow, this is a clean engine. All right, so now what I'm gonna do, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna get the mirror attachment. We're gonna stick the mirror on the end of this and uh, let's see what we can't see. You know, maybe see the cylinder head, the valves, things like that. Now installing the mirror on this is super easy. There's a little port here on the end of the camera that you'll see the hook goes into and then you simply slide this collar over it. So now, let me turn off the lights in the garage again so we don't have the glare on the screen. And let's go ahead, get down into the uh, combustion chambers and see what we see. All right guys, so here we are in number one. And what you're seeing here is the end of where the piston rings are scrubbing the cylinder wall. So this is what would be known as basically a carbon ring. And then over here are some of our valves. So if we spin this guy around, we can see that there is very minor carbon buildup inside of this combustion chamber. But that is not anything, like I said, that I would be concerned about. So let's go ahead, look in number two. And you'll see we have about it's the same type of deal. We have a little bit of carbon build up there. You can see the valves. But what I'm impressed about is how much of that crosshatch is still present in that combustion chamber with 190 something thousand miles. Here's number three. I am also amazed at just how clear this is. You got a little wetness there. We might have a little bit of a leak on our valve guide seals or something like that, letting a little bit of oil into the, uh, the chamber, but yeah, that's a little bit of oil coming in from the valves. But you'll see we still have a beautiful, beautiful crosshatch here on these cylinder walls. Oh wow, that valve's open too. It's pretty neat. Alright, let's go into number four. That is basically a look inside of a almost 200,000 mile Toyota engine. Now I did just want to go over some of the bullet points of this guy here. The length of the camera itself is 80 centimeters. The tube diameter is 6.4 millimeters. So your hole has to be larger than 6.4 millimeters for this camera to fit down there. It's got an almost five foot USB cable length, it uses USP 3.0, it has an IP67 uh, waterproof rating, it does have those eight LED lights on the end of the barrel for the camera, and uh, let's see, it's a two megapixel camera, and like I said, it's got a camera button, and a button on the front of it to control said LEDs, like so. So just because I was curious, we went ahead, put a ratchet on our crankshaft, and we rotated number one and number four to bottom, bottom top dead center. So right now, number one and number four are at as low as they will go, so we can see the entirety 
of my cylinder wall here. And like I said, we do have a little bit of light scoring in that area, right toward the left of the screen. But it's not anything that I'm concerned about because it really looks like that would just wipe away. It doesn't look like any of that would be able to be caught um, by, you know, a fingernail or something like that. So number two and three right here should be at the very top of their stroke. So this probably won't even go down there. You see this, the piston's right there. So let's go down into number four, get another good look at number four in its entirety. Sometimes if you point the camera down like that, when you come back up, it'll have a little bit of an angle to it. You can see a little more of the cylinder wall like I'm doing right now. Overall, I am very impressed with both this camera and what we are seeing in the engine. So let me go ahead, get numbers two and three to bottom dead center. Easiest way to do that is drop an extension down into the engine. A nice long one right now I have it in number one and you'll see as I spin this engine that extension will begin to rear its ugly head and you want to get it to the dwell point the dwell point is when it stops moving that's my dwell right there so now let's go ahead take a peek into two and three. Just adjust this camera for you a little bit here. Now you'll see I can either turn the brightness down or turn it way up. I am amazed at how clean this engine is. You can still see the numbers on top of the pistons. You see number B there. Okay, now let's go into number three. This is a very clean engine. Now this just goes to show you, I run a fuel additive in this engine every time I change the oil. I run Tecron fuel additive and I run a, a decent high quality oil. I'm not running crap oil, I'm running Castrol. So if you take care of your car, it'll take care of you. Like I said, we have 193,000 miles, wow I'm zoomed in. Okay, we have 193,000 miles on this engine. It was rebuilt at around 60 or 70 uh, under Toyota's campaign. So even so, it's still got over 100,000 miles on it since it was opened up. And you can still see the writing on the top of the pistons. That just goes to show you, if you maintain your car, there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to get two, three, four hundred thousand 400,000 miles out of your engine. So I hope you guys enjoy our little uh, video review of the X-Tool horoscope and I hope this uh, this look inside of our 190,000 mile 2AZ FE Toyota four cylinder engine kind of put your mind at ease. If you don't have one that's burning oil and you're not getting a ton of carbon buildup and you're taking care of it, there's no reason it shouldn't run forever. So please like, share, subscribe. We'll see you next time.